thanks very much to everyone who's joined so far. Uh, we're recording this uh, session, so we'll be able to share it afterwards with yourselves and with, with colleagues. Um, so to give you a, a quick uh, rundown of the agenda, um, basically, we're just going to do a quick welcome and uh, uh, get the guys to introduce themselves. We're going to have a discussion and cover three of the, the main uh, risk areas that we see um, frequently uh, coming up with uh, companies that are contemplating a digital transformation journey. And then we'll have time for, for a Q&A. Um, <clears throat> so just by, by way of introduction, I'm Rich Dale. I'm CEO of Flowlens. Flowlens is a cloud-based application aimed at uh, small to medium-sized equipment manufacturers and, uh, and dealers. And we uh, offer an all-in-one uh, solution. So it, it's a package that covers each aspect of the business. Um, but a, a critical part of what we do is, is help our, our customers get onboarded um, because we can see how they get the benefits um, of the system faster and how that makes an impact on their business. So, so that's a quick uh, intro from me and from the business and over to... Hi, I'm uh, Mark Van Niekirk, uh, Head of Operations and Customer Success with Flowlens. And my chief objective uh, within the business is, is to ensure that customers uh, maximize their investment in Flowlens. Thank you, Marv. Julian, can you go next? Uh, good morning, uh, Julian Attors, MD of Halomech. We're a UK-based distributor of accessories for the heavy equipment market. Um, company's been running for 15 years and we've been working with Flowlens um, since November last year. Thank you, Julian. Dennis? Hi, I'm Dennis Lohar. I'm chairman of uh, Photonic Measurements based in Lisbon. And uh, we've been um, commercializing now for about two years. Uh, we make electronic instruments for measuring organic content in water using ultraviolet light. And um, so we're doing quite nicely this last couple of years growing as a business and now selling into about 40 countries, believe it or not. And so we got to the size where we absolutely needed a, a system for sure. Spreadsheets, et cetera, we're never gonna do it us. So we, we, we chose to roll in. Thank you, Dennis. And last but not least, Oliver. Yeah, hello, everybody. hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Oliver Corns. I'm the AMD of JCS Nuclear Solutions. Um, we're an SME based in uh, near Manchester in, uh, in the UK, um, and we supply um, radiation detection um, solutions uh, for shielding and sensing, uh, basically. So we're an equipment manufacturer as well. Thank you, Oliver. So just wanted to recap um last month we did a webinar about uh, de-risking the, the digital transformation journey and as i mentioned at the start um the, there are risks there that, that small companies really can't afford uh to to, to take um or at least they, they can't afford to go on a journey without understanding what those risks are because the the, the cost of of getting things wrong could be could be catastrophic and cer certainly hold a business back um so in the last webinar, which is available on our on our blog, we talked about you know how you, you need to get people aligned with the, the the need for change and how your business objectives will will drive um, that uh, empowerment and, and that motivation um, to to look at systems and processes and make sure that they're fit for purpose. And then we talked about about how the, the business really needs to under, understand what its processes are and and allow those to drive the requirements for for change and for, for systems. And we talked about then embedding the change and how uh, keeping, uh, developing and keeping habits for, for those new systems and processes were fundamental to the success of the, of the change and embedding a, a culture of continuous improvement. Um, so what, what we're gonna do is cover a, a couple of those areas in, in some detail. And um, I'm gonna pick up with uh, Julian and then Oliver on the, the first area, um, which is really about understanding um, when, whenever you know you've, you, you've got, a, got to change. So you, you've de developed a, a set of objectives for the business and that you know that the systems and processes that you have aren't, aren't going to take you there. Um, 
how how do you um, get your your people on board with the idea of change, and you know how do you motivate them, um, and and help them understand that what what they're doing now and how they're doing it isn't going to be the the the, the way they will do it in the future. So, Julian, do you want to kick off first? Yeah, yeah, thanks, Rich. Um, so I think there were a couple of really real key drivers for us in in wanting to find some some new solutions to to manage our business. Um, one of them was uh, it, 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 we were running, and I, I'm sure this applies to a lot of people. We were running a CRM system and running an MRP system that didn't talk to one another. Laid on top of that, the the account system was locally hosted. And basically our, our fundamental driver was we wanted a, a one place to go to, to be able to manage the whole lot, have all the information in one place and for everybody to be able to understand it. In, in terms of taking, taking colleagues on that journey and getting them all engaged with it, we, we um, and I think this was, this was probably one of the best moves we, we made. We got some outside help in to help us um, define the issues that we had and also to engage with all of the key stakeholders across the business. So rather than me doing it in the five minutes spare that I had at the end of the day, we got somebody in to, to engage with all the stakeholders and really understand what their, um, what their requirements were of a system. And, and this was going back to pre-selecting pre Flow Lens as, as our desired platform. Uh, and um, this consultant, um, it was money well spent. He helped us select the system and also ensured that everybody was um, everybody's needs were met as far as they could be and, and everybody got taken on the on the journey and um, so we engaged with everybody from early stage we involved we over involved people rather than under involved them um, through the stuff that Marv took us through with um, with training and engagement so so um, we were able to sort of get a lot of a lot of good momentum right from right from a, the very early part of the process and that was absolutely absolutely key to it brilliant julian thank you i think resourcing it is the most fundamental um uh, mistake some uh, most people make or if you if you don't uh, real, realize and commit to it then you, you know it is a the, the easiest way to to fail so thank you yeah. Oliver, do you want to jump in there? Yeah, sure. So, um, so ours was um, when we start first started looking at um, sort of like updating our systems to improving. It was sort of driven by a regime change in the business where we um, our um, our accountant was retiring. Our, we had an internal accountant that worked for us, um, and and we were engaging with an external um, party who are our firm of accountants that we work with that were advising that we should move from quite an antiquated, robust but antiquated system using um, like a, a, a platform and dozens of spreadsheets that we were using to manage our day-to-day, -day. so like financial management at the company, um, um, and wanted to move us on to zero as the, as the uh, financial management side of the business. Um, and then from that, we quickly learned that we needed to um, use a bolt-on or an additional um, uh, piece of software to work with zero for the sales order management. Um, which then um, as a team, we're only a small agile sort of team of four or five people. We were really then started driving requirements in terms of, okay, and understanding what it is we really needed in terms of from um, a CRM side of stuff, all the way through from sales order management and production management to MRP. Um, so we were selecting, so the whole team had a good, we had a good, I don't know, three or four months of actually investigating what, op what options we had. Um, a few people had recommended stuff, other colleagues, other sort of like stakeholders in the business had recommended the accountant had a preferred system they wanted to use. So, yeah, so we were all involved um, in selecting and reviewing what were our options and definitely the CRM side of stuff and the MRP side of stuff on Flowlands was a real winner for us. Thank you. And jumping into implementation. Yeah. Um, following on from identifying or there's a need there's there's a need for change uh within your business uh, how how did, how did you go about defining uh, the requirements uh in order to identify the best system that that suited those those business requirements um dennis if i could ask you for for your input on that um, 
Yeah, I, so we started off, um, we looked out into the marketplace to see who could provide the system for us. So, so we definitely looked at three or four suppliers. And um, just as the guy said earlier, um, and we allowed each one of those suppliers uh, to pitch to us, really as to what they could do for our business. Um, and the, the single biggest um, important thing to do was to allow the team to choose which system to go with, right? Um, rather, as the other guy said earlier on, rather than me choosing or the CEO choosing, we allowed everyone a, a, an individual an equal voice in that choice. Um, but in terms of requirements, we had got to a stage where we were just being overloaded with uh, paperwork. Um, so we, we knew we were at a point, and I think there is a point all this at two, you say, I'm at that point now where I need automation, right? And we had got to the point where I think the, the team within the business were were um, feeling the pain, right? So you got to that pain point where you said, we need help, we need a system. Um, and that's when we really started. Yeah. Julian, can, can you share your thoughts on that? Yeah, okay. So so like, like Oliver, I think uh, one of the drivers for us was... Um, uh, our accountant was keen for us to move over to zero. I ought to explain that we were running um, Sage accounts and we were using their CRM package uh, prior to that, locally hosted, so, so that came with its own problems. And we were running um, a package called ACT CRM, which was owned by Sage. And we bought it on the, on the basis that it would interface with its parent company's account systems, but it didn't. So, so the biggest driver for us was that we wanted end-to-end -end, um, process management from, uh, from inquiries to order fulfillment, not having to double entry stuff, get some, get some uh, better, uh, better constraints um, around order processing, around quoting, which had been a little bit ad hoc and fly by the seat of your pants and really, really put some, some more strict processes in right for, right right through the um, through the whole of our business and and it's it the transformation's been incredible it really has I mean we, we found money that we were losing uh, because of our our uh, unjoined up processes it's really streamlined our um, our effectiveness and our ability to to um, to work effectively and it's also given a lot more people a lot more ability to to perform functions within the business. So anybody can quote now. It, it's not just a case of catching me and saying, put your finger in the air, Julian, how much do you think we ought to charge for this complex project? No, you can go and you can go and build it yourself now in flow lens and, and chase it through. So so it's it's freed me up and it's really streamlined our um, our processes. Does that sort of answer your question there, Marv? Yeah, thank you. That also justifies your extra three holidays a year that you can take now as well. So that's that's, that's hey, abs absolutely right. It's as a as a business owner, it's about giving yourself the freedom to make the choices, isn't it? Yeah. Just just on a on a follow up for for both of you, and uh, Ali, feel free to chip in as well. I mean, on a, on a practical side, um, on in identifying those requirements, did you did you go through you know any sort of workflows um, doing you know and. And as is, this is our current process, and and maybe this is how we want it to be. Did did, did you follow any of those? Yeah, well, certainly we did uh, at uh, the public measurements. We did uh, a paper exercise, and uh, I think that's the only way to do it. Walk through the process, look for areas that can be improved, can be removed, and then you can automate. Uh, so you you do need to understand your process manually to begin with, and uh, before you go to automate. Uh, I should mention, Jerry, the other key driver for us, of course, was our board. Our board were asking for uh, lots of key performance indicators. You know, how is the business doing? You know, how many quotations are you putting out there before you win one? Uh, what's your win ratio? Uh, how much stock do you have? There's just so many questions being asked and so much time being consumed trying to answer all of those questions. But um, as Julian said earlier, I mean, it literally comes now at the touch of a button, and it's so and it's, and it's so repetitive now. And people do tend to trust the system, right? You trust the system a lot more than you do some manual process. 
So you you understood you had a clear understanding of your pain points in the business and and what you were trying to resolve. Yeah. 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 And as I said earlier, the team had also. So they were feeling that pain, and we had got to a point and a size whereby we just needed automation. Otherwise, we were going to break. We were we were in a similar position um, to Julian talking about having a, a, a SAGE system and the AX CRM, we were in exactly the same position where that was definitely a pain point. Um, so we out our workflow um, and in terms of, okay, how do we manage our inquiry, uh, an inquiry all the way through to invoice? And we had multiple different processes and procedures and systems that did that. So that was definitely our, um, so there was lots of margin for error. And although we're you know, quite a small, outfit and we could capture those it was still they were the points that we wanted to kind of overcome and that was our final decision maker um, with flow lens was the, the the ability to manage that all the way through in a single system and have visibility for the whole team to see which is brilliant yeah really really the same as oliver for us uh, the, the biggest focal point for us was the interface interface between our crm system and our mrp system that that was where all of our pain all of our pain was focused really and and um we knew that we knew our workflows pretty well because we could manage them on both sides of the coin but the the biggest issue was the interface between crm and um and mrp and and uh, flow lens ticked all the boxes for us uh, and you know we had to do some due diligence around basically looking at migrating the data understanding that we were going to lose some detail on it yeah of course you are there's no system that's there's no there's no silver bullet for for transferring from one system to another but but in in summary we were pretty happy with the outcome and uh, we're certainly very very happy with the way um flow lens is performing for us at the moment thank you julian it's good to hear in terms of getting to that state um you know the the uh, the implementation of the system is is critical, um, and we, we don't like to leave that to chance. Uh, you know, as we've said earlier, you know that customer success and getting that point of of the value that the system delivers um, being real is really important for us. So, I'm interested to pick up on your experiences, um, Oliver. If I can start with you in terms of 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 that kind of cultural change and that you know that that getting through that uh, that hump of of the current system and the new system and and how how that experience worked for you and and you know what tips would you give other companies that are that are planning for that yeah a, well you guys um, were incredibly helpful in helping us prepare for that as well so once we've made the decision to to go with flow lens uh, we had a good few sessions with yourselves in terms of what uh, kind of setting our own expectations within the company in terms of you know what what changes are going to be made and what we need to prepare for so I think the, the first thing I would that I would definitely say and something we still talk about within the business is um, managing the expectation of change and there is going to be change because um, you know no one system is the same and um, and and what we were very kind of said ourselves very quickly was I said look we've got a new system um, but and its benefits are going to be this but be prepared to be able to access or get the data that the system is going to give you in a different way to what we're used to working, basically. So, you know, so, so where we might have been able to um, find our data traditionally from pulling from Sage and putting that into a spreadsheet and pulling from something else and putting that into a spreadsheet, it's going to be different. So that's the first thing is, you know, understand that things are going to be changed, uh, that there is going to be change, set expectation and actually um, start being excited about that as well. So it's quite important. So we did that uh, for a start. Um, and then also um, keep trialing and trialing and trialing. You guys provided us with a sandbox um, where we could start practicing importing data, cleansing data from old systems, bringing it into the new. Again, we had um, we were bringing in data from two separate systems from our Sage finance system, which had all of our sales orders and products and you know bills and material, all that kind of stuff. But also a, a, a whole plethora of different information from customers and companies from a CRM plus everybody's own kind of emails and outlooks and combining all of that data, cleansing it. And we spend a lot of time um, cleansing all the data from each of these systems offline on spreadsheets into the templates that you provide before we even brought those into, into Flowlens. Um, I think the thing that really helped us was uh, having 
access to the sandbox system that you provided that we could really experiment and play and train and learn and quiz. And then, you know, we, we, I think we wiped it a couple of times and started again, and then just put every part of our procedures and processes that we have in the business through the sandbox time and time again until we were happy to go live with the live system, basically. So that took longer than we expected, but I think that was very much worth it in terms of the investment in time and training and understanding. Um, and the biggest one in terms of kind of the implementation is learning and understanding the data and what you need. And then also pulling stuff from your old system that isn't going to be reflected as you want in flow lens or, you know, you want data from like an old sales order processing system, whatever, get all of that out and get it into a format that you can then use away from your old system too. Okay, Laura, Dennis, did you want to jump in there? Um, say, um, I'm old enough to remember and go back to being involved in a few systems uh, being implemented in the past, but it used to be people would do it in a big bang approach, you know, <laughs> but I think one of the things their best was to do it incrementally. So you can choose the speed at which you implement and you can decide to do the stock control or load all your customers on. So you don't have to do it all at once. You do it incrementally and then only move to the next step uh, when, when you're in control of the first step. Mm -hmm. um, for me, in other words, do it in small bites, right? So that's uh, certainly what we did. We, we took, a, we, we did our customers first and then we looked after stock. And, and we just did it uh, as, at our own pace. You don't have to do it all at one go. It's, it's almost uh, too big to do in one go. And I think you could get into deep trouble if you did. Entirely agree with that, Dennis. Thank you. Um, just uh, with a few minutes uh, left on the, the webinar, just to remind uh, our attendees, if you have any questions you'd like to, to pose to the panel, please um, pop them in the, the chat or the Q&A. Um, so, Julian, can we just pick up on that with you? And I'm just thinking, you know, that sort of cultural change um, within the organization, uh, you know, what was your perspective on, on making the success of the implementation? I think, I think largely it was, uh, it was successful and it was pretty painless uh, with, with some minor exceptions where people just were really, really struggling to get their heads around what we were trying to achieve. Um, uh, but that's you know we just came up up against a brick wall with with um, one individual um, and it would that was complicated by lots of other things. So so you know we we've we've moved that to one side and um, largely we've uh, it's been it's been pretty seamless. Um, a few small road bumps in in the early stages, but I think everybody's really really positive about the benefits that it's given them and. And the fact that it's simplified our workflows, it's simplified the data entry. Everybody, all of the stakeholders have got visibility of everything that's going on, and it, it just gives us great flexibility for a for a relatively small company. So, so um, yeah, it, it, it was quite an easy sell, all in all, really. And I think that was probably a, a testament to the approach work that we did in the early stages. And I can see that you've got. Steve Totnell on the call, and you might be it might be worth um, bringing him in on this because he was actually the guy that I uh, that I dragged in as a consultant to um, to help with the implementation. So he may have a an interesting perspective to offer you if you can if you can drag him along or or if you wish to. Uh, well, if Steve would like to join us, he can send us a quick a quick a quick message. Otherwise, we'll not put him completely on the um, spot. No, you put him on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> um a cu couple of questions here um so ray dodd hi ray um ju just wanted to understand the the head count you know what sort of size are, are each of your companies <laughs> Dennis, well, ten, ten or less ten, ten people or less mm -hmm. okay. yeah, quite a small quite a small under 10. yeah we're four yeah Similar, similar size, 10, 10 and growing rapidly. So, uh, yeah. yeah so we have lots of contractors. So, uh, so this is a, so although we're a small unit, um, we work a lot with other, with external organizations that do some of our assemblies and sub assemblies and other bits and pieces too. So, 
Valencia is really good for that too, in terms of managing, you know, the BOMs and the MRP requirement with subcontractors that are supplying those bits and pieces rather than us doing the kind of the nitty gritty manufacturing too. So it does work like that too. Good stuff. Yeah. Uh, a question from Leanne um, regarding having already got flow lens and is more training available. So the answer is yes. You know, we're always, always here and we'll make that with you after, after the, the webinar. Uh, so Steve has put his hand up, so we're going to um, add him to the uh, to the panel here. Steve, if you uh, want to join us and put your camera on and say hello. So unmute. Hi, Steve. So hello, we're everybody. I did just kind of check on the lies that Julian was saying, but uh, happy to help in any way. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we're, we've only a few minutes left, so it just became, you know, what 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 is your one kind of main takeaway from the the, the change management process? It's a d difficult thing to boil down into. I it's think not, it was it... Julian underst thought he understood what he needed, gave me a good brief to start, and I then went and boiled down all the systems out there looking for what fitted the best. Simple as that. And I think in the end, Flow Lens was the only one that was a direct fit. Everything else either had a CRM system. Um, so finding something that would work the way Julian wanted it to work was where we ended up with FlowCell. So that thorough understanding of the requirements and the work that you yeah. did with the team and the mm -hmm. stakeholders sounds like it was yeah. fundamental to that understanding. And I've, and I've probably done half a dozen different MRP CRM, well, mainly MRP ERP systems. So I knew that side well. It was a CRM system I had to go out and learn. And we have dealt with them on the, on the peripherals before. And you're available for business, Dave? No, I'm now the chief operations officer <laughs> in another company. <laughs> hey, look, Steve and I, are still, I ought to explain, Steve and I are personal friends, and uh, he was helping me out because I was absolutely overloaded, and I knew he had a lot of really, really useful experience in operations management, so it, it worked out well for both of us. For sure. It's a game changer, for sure. Um, Oliver, do you want to give us your last last word on the on the subject? What, what would you leave um, our listeners and viewers with? Uh... Yeah, I think I, I I think for us, it's really definitely um, embrace change and look forward to how you can access data so quickly and so efficiently. And um, we've just had an, uh, uh, like a big sort of like monthly uh, accounts meeting today with our external accountants and. Um, um, we were this is a real great real time example for this saying okay what we need to do is to see what kind of like projections we've got in terms of invoices between this period and this period and blah 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 all that kind of stuff and i was able to pull the data out of flow lens within seconds um which would have taken you know hours and hours of crunching of spreadsheets and changing stuff and stuff like that too so so i think um the reality is from from adopting flow lens back in march we were probably processing about a dozen spreadsheets on a daily basis and we've managed to get that down to two Flowlands does everything else for us now so it's uh, which is incredible so it's saved a huge amount of time in the business that we can now spend on you know business generation and, and actually being more efficient in other areas well thank you and dennis what's your takeaway i think the takeaway i would leave People with, a, especially those listening in who don't have a, an ERP system, is, um, I mean, the, the, the cost of doing this to spend is very modest. Some few hundreds of pounds a month uh, buys you a system, and you do get a lot of system for a relatively small cost. Um, so I would say, don't be afraid to do it. Um, the system will grow with you. And I know that the lens continue to adopt and develop. Um, as the months and years go by and so the, the system will grow to meet your future needs so it's definitely not a big cost um, but it's a huge cost if you don't do something like this if you continue to try to grow in the old way using hardback books and spreadsheets and all that sort of stuff uh, that will certainly cost Absolutely. We were doing some calculations earlier, Marv, on the return on investment, you know, on the average UK wage or salary. Yeah. And typically, if you save, save a day, uh, say a day a week in the time spent. A day a week, yeah. It's, it's a, the, the return on investment coupled with, uh, you know, the cost of opportunity of, of, of change um, is, is significant. If, if done 
in the right way um, yeah. is, is a game changer for businesses. Yeah. So we'll, we'll leave it at that. Again, I'd just like to thank uh, everyone, Oliver, Julian, Dennis, and Steve, your um, good man for being put on the spot. Thanks for, for all your valuable insights and appreciate the feedback. And hopefully our uh, viewers will um, take this knowledge and put it into practice in their own change programs. So thank you all again, and we'll be in touch soon. There'll be another webinar next month. So look out for that. Thank Thanks, you, everyone. Okay. Well, Bye -bye. take care. Bye -bye. Night.